What's up, guys? Welcome to another exciting, lovely, informative episode on Latman Farms. Fingerlings, fingerlings, fingerlings has always been something I hear farmers talking about. In today's episode, we are going to share with you where and how to source your fingerlings and how to be able to take good care of them so that your production can be very, very effective. There are a lot of issues that people have raised with respect to fingerlings. There are farms that I have visited and at the end of the day, they stock with about 50,000 fingerlings, but then within a short while, they lost over 50 to 60% of their fingerlings. In today's episode, we are trying to help you to know what to do before you even go and source your fingerlings. We did a video about how to be able to set up your tank and then how to be able to get your fingerlings into that tank. And that video has been a video that is receiving a lot of good response. It is as a result of this that now I have chosen to bring you this episode quickly so that you would save some money in sourcing your fingerlings. So one may ask, what are fingerlings? Fingerlings are fish of your finger size. So any fish that you can find that it is of your finger size is a fingerling. The next question is, how do I source good fingerlings? To be frank with you, to be able to know where to get good fingerlings from, Latman Farms already produces and then also makes some fingerlings available to other people. But then what you are looking out for at the end of the day is, you should be able to purchase or be able to have seen how their matured fish react, how they grow and their activities. This is going to help you to have an idea of how your fingerlings will also grow because they may be of the same genetic background and it becomes easier for you to have a clear picture of the kind of fingerlings you are going to have. Fingerlings are being sold from one CD, one CD 50 pesos to two CDs and above. Now, a few days before you source your fingerlings, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to call whoever is supposed to give you the fingerlings. So if it is Latman Farms, you call us, we give you a specific day and time for you to be able to pick up your fingerlings. With Latman Farms, what you also do is we try to not just get you fingerlings, but then also sometimes procure the feed for you because we are in contact with some of these uh, fish feed manufacturing companies. And so it is easier for us to get that logistics in place for you. So on your day of coming to my farm, or on a day where you're coming to see me, you have access to fingerlings and feed, and a small training that I'll give to you so that you know how the feeding and other things is going to be done. Now with a complete setup at your end, few days before you pick up the fingerlings, make sure that you have placed water in your tank. And this water should be in your tank for at least two days. So what it means is, in two days before you are able to go and pick up your fingerlings, you have water already in the fish tank, just awaiting the fingerlings to come into the tank. The best time for you to pick your fingerlings is going to be in the morning or in the evening. In the morning, you are looking at before sunrise, and then in the evening, you are looking at after sunset. When the sun is available, the fishes are going to be very active. And because the fish is going to be very active, they are going to produce a lot of waste during your transportation period. Now, the farmer is aware that he's supposed to not feed the fish for 24 hour period before the day for which you pick up the fingerlings. Now, this is going to reduce the amount of waste that the fish is going to produce during the time of the transportation. This is very important for you to take note because the pollution in the tank as a result of the transportation will be drastically reduced when the farmer chooses not to feed them between a 24 hour period and then also you choose to take them within these periods. Now with a reduced pollution, it means that the fish may not be so stressed and then it will not lead to mass mortality. And it is very important that you take note because during the time the farmer picks them up from his tank, so when he places them into whatever medium you want to use to transport them, the fish will already be stressed to a certain extent. And then during your transportation period, so when you take them and place them into your setup, they would also be stressed. So at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to try as much as possible to reduce the stress 
reduce the stress. Yes, they will receive some level of stress, but you want to try and reduce the stress. Another thing you like to look out for is how you handle your fish. It is very important for you to note that if you malhandle the fish, you are going to stress them and they are going to eventually die. And so in your transporting them from, let's say, you're picking it up from the source, even into your tank, there are some scoop nets that you can use. An example is this. This one is good enough for fingerlings. And then if you have a lot of the fish and this one is too small, you can look out for something like this. With something like these two, it will be quite easy for you to be able to transport them into the tank. Secondly, if you don't have any of these things, you can get any basket or any bowl with perforations and then also make sure that it doesn't have any sharp ends because if there are any sharp ends in whatever you're going to use to handle the fish, it is going to probably prick them and then at a point in time, they may bleed and then they can die. And so you really need to take note of that. Now, when you are also trying, you can use this option or you can also choose that when you go to wherever you're picking them from, sometimes with some of the farmers, they use either the barrels or they use the rubbers. And so if they're using the barrels, the, there is the, the gallons that we use. Some of them, we call them the, the jerry can or the kufo gallon in Ghana. You can get any of those gallons. When you have the fingerlings in them, because there's a change of temperature from the farm you are picking up your fingerlings from to where the fingerlings are going to be in your pond, when you get to your farm, you can nicely clean the tank and if possible, get some salt solution with some foam, rub it all around the container in which the fish was placed in. And then after that, you clean it nicely and then you can lower it into your fish pond. When you lower it into your fish pond, place it inside the fish pond in a way that the fish are not going to come out of it and then allow the tank to be in the water for about 30 minutes. Then after when you come back, what you do is you tilt the container and allow the fish to swim into their new tank. And so you don't go and just go and pour them, no. You allow them to swim into the new tank. The next thing you're supposed to note is the distance for the transportation. And so if you pick the fingerlings from a farmer's source, you need to also calculate how far you are taking the fingerlings to. Depending on the distance for which you are transporting the fingerlings, there may be a need for you to change the water. So if you are transporting them for more than six hours, there is the possibility of you being required to change the water. So most of the time you are supposed to look at the kind of fingerlings you are picking and what kind of container you are putting them into to be able to tell whether the waste they are producing is too much. Because if the waste they are producing is too much, it is going to contaminate the tank and the water in the tank in which the fish are in. And for that reason, there may be a lot of pollutants and then it can lead to stress and then it can lead to mass mortalities of the fingerlings. And so if the distance, there is the need for you to change the water, then you have to change all of this in order to be safe that water change you're going to do is also going to replenish or give the fish new oxygen source because if you are transporting them for about 12 hours 24 hours you may lose some of the oxygen in them and then they may struggle and also there's going to be a lot of movement in whatever you are going to be using to transport them and so you need to really take note of this that i am saying but if as a result of where you are transporting them to the distance isn't too far then you can just pick them from the farmer's end and just drive straightly to where you are going to have your fish pond and then it is easy for you to continue from there. So with me, sometimes when I receive the fish at my end, because the water in which the fish are in may be polluted, what I do is I get either the scoop net or any of a colander and then I put the fish in and then I drain the water and then I pick that scoop net or whatever it is into my fish pond, lower it gently, and allow the fish to swim into the pond. But what you must take note of is this. Make sure that the temperature differences isn't too much when you are doing anything of this sort. That is why I am saying that 
transport your fingerlings before sunrise and after sunset so that the temperature differences will not be too great because if the temperature differences is too great it will be difficult for the fish to easily acclimatize to the new pond and there will be so much stress so even when you transported them from your source you realize maybe you didn't have any mortality but then when you brought them into your tank after a short while they start dying sometimes you may think they are okay in the pond because they may be moving but then they have been so much stressed and so they may not die that very day but then maybe the next day is when you start losing your fingerlings fingerlings are so crucial in this business and so make sure you are buying them from a trusted source so that in case there is anything it is easy for you to address the situation or whatever is happening also make sure you are buying them from a source where you can receive some level of training this is a bonus tip i am giving to you guys when you receive your fingerlings into your farm take note of this that in the next two weeks you are supposed to continue or start your sorting and so two weeks after the fingerlings have arrived into your fish pond just make sure that you try as much as possible to sort them also when you receive new fingerlings into your pond you as the farmer you need to be very very cautious of whatever is happening in your pond because at some fingerling stages you may need to feed the fish four times or three times every single day also make sure you do not overfeed your fingerlings because if you overfeed your fingerlings because they are like babies they would eat and eat and eat and then they may become stressed and then they will die if you have fingerlings in your pond make sure water changes are done regularly this is because it is easier for big fish to adapt to massive changes but with fingerlings sometimes the least changes in activities may cause mass mortality so that's it on today's episode on latman farms make sure you get fingerlings from the right and trusted sources please continue to like share and subscribe and put on notification bell so you don't miss out on any episode if you need any fingerling there will be a number in the description section below just reach out to us we would ask you the quantity ask you all the details and then we'll be able to make sure that you are sorted also with respect to feed we have a program available that on your day of picking up your fingerlings, you can have fingerlings, you can have feed, and then you can have some level of small training that will help you to mitigate all of these losses in your farm. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll catch you another time on Latman Farms once again. Bye.